Which five cars I believe will give uh, the Tesla a run for their money in uh, the next year? Uh, by the end of 2018, really beginning of 2019, I think that this year we have some really interesting newcomers um, and they will definitely uh, become a major competition and therefore choice for all of us when we're shopping for an electric car. I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Take it Well, first of all, let me tell you that the reason you're watching this video instead of my regular daily news video is because I am going to Italy, uh, Milan, Italy, actually, uh, to cover the unveiling of a Byton, a European unveiling. I already covered it for you guys here at CES in Vegas in January, but they're doing the big thing during the Milan's design week. So I'm excited about that and I'll be there to cover it for you. So for now, I'm just kind of exploring some topics that we talked about it. Um, and so I'm streaming this on Patreon right now, but you will most likely uh, see it sometime next week while I'm still in Italy. Um, and of course, if you want to uh, join this community, please, please uh, click on the subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. And of course, if you want to watch this live on Patreon and everyday live on Patreon, uh, join me at patreon.com slash e for electric and I did not mean to put that graphics that was from the yesterday's video top 10 things I don't like about my model s hope you check that one out so but anyway so this is the car I'm uh, I'm excited about and I'm going to be covering uh, um, in uh, Italy uh, but it is not one of the competitors that I believe that Tesla is going to have this year so let's start uh, with the very first one, which is a Nissan Leaf, the new Nissan Leaf, and not even the this Nissan new Nissan Leaf of this year. It is the Nissan Leaf that they're going to have uh, 2019. Because right now, the Nissan Leaf, really, what people realize that it's um, it's the previous version as far as the tech is concerned, plus the bigger battery, which is good, and plus the uh, much much better. Uh, shell, but uh, there are a couple of major things uh, missing, uh, which is an, a, a bigger battery, which they're, they're going to have next year, about 225 miles instead of 151 miles that they have this year. And most importantly, they're actually going to replace the batteries that they're making themselves right now with LG Cam batteries that are also have an active thermal management system, which means um, they will last longer and all these problems that, uh, you know, Nissan's been having with batteries are going to be hopefully gone. And, you know, LG Cam obviously is a company that I think is going to do a better job than a Nissan because they kind of sold that part of their company anyway. Um, the reason I think it's going to give them a, money, a run for their money is because one, obviously people, not everybody can afford Teslas and not because even Tesla Model 3 is kind of expensive, but this car is at about $30,000. Um, but with a smaller range, 151 miles, that will still be the option next year. But at the same time, what's you know, it, it, it's a compact car. It's a hatchback. So this is very important for you know big cities in Europe. This might just be a better choice uh, than even a Model Three, right? As or people who you know like to travel uh, and and also have like camping and hiking trips and all that stuff. So that might just be better for them. And it is still cheaper. Uh, Nissan won't reach uh, their uh, milestone of 200,000 cars sold in America. So their uh, tax credit won't be phased out as quickly or as, you know, as fast as Tesla's. So more people will be able to enjoy it. They are also selling this in Europe um, and in Japan. They're actually very successful. Uh, they, they're kicking butt. I can only imagine what's going to happen once they have the active thermal management system and at the longer range. So they are definitely something that people are considering. And don't forget, this is a kind of a trusted company. They have their own following and people will just stay with that company rather than go to Tesla or others. They're just, you know, they're fans. Um, obviously, they can guarantee their product. They, they have plenty of service centers and so forth. Yes, they don't have the uh, fast charging network, though it is being built in Europe uh, right now, but in the United States, it is a problem. But for people who want to use this car basically on a daily basis, just go to their work and everything, this is more than enough range. Um, I have a Tesla Model S regular 60, it has about 180 miles of realistic range. And to be honest with you, I only supercharge when I go on long trips. And um, a lot of people have no problems renting a car, using their second car for the longer trips. So this may just be fine uh, because of the range. And that's why I think uh, Nissan will do very well with this. And some people will opt out for you know this instead of the Model 3 just because it's just a bit cheaper, especially with tax incentives. Um, and it's a little bit more available. You can, you can buy it right now and you still have to wait for you know maybe another year in many parts of the world 
for the Model 3. All right, uh, let me move on to another one that I'm considering myself, actually, which is Jaguar I-Pace. And um, this is um, a serious competitor. They are in production at the end of the year. They're going to be uh, sold pretty much also at the end of the year. Um, Waymo just ordered 20,000 of these babies. Uh, and I'm actually considering one myself. Uh, the range is pretty decent. It's over 200, way over 200 uh, miles. And just like I mentioned, that you know, for those who have a second car or don't mind renting a gas car for longer trips, this is not bad. There are fans of Jaguars who just buy Jaguars. They love the way it looks. They love the grill. They, they kept the grill, even though it does serve a bit of a purpose. It obviously is not helping the drag uh, uh, efficiency. And of course, uh, it looks like a Jaguar. So this, this will be a very popular car. Again, this is an SUV. It's a compact SUV, extremely popular. Tesla is, what, two years away until Model Y is out there. And if people, if people want to get even the cheapest SUV, uh, from Tesla, it will be a bigger Model X, which kind of, the, the only problem I do have this with this one is, of course, it costs a little too much, I think, but don't forget, they will not be running out of the tax incentive. So in another year, they will have uh, a relatively comparable price to Tesla Model X because uh, Tesla won't have as much of the tax credit going back to people's wallets. So, um, and I, it, again, major manufacturer has its own following, service centers and so forth. Um, so I, I, again, I'm considering it myself, good looking car. Um, so I believe this is also going to be a major competitor. By the way, before I go any further, just wanted to remind you guys that uh, this show and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. Check out the description of this video where you can get a discount code if you're shopping there. Let's move on. Hyundai Kona EV. Uh, this car is kind of snuck up on, I think, all of us um, because it's kind of been unveiled this year. Um, and uh, they're going to start making it this year. It's going to start selling it this year. Uh, it has about 238 mile range. Uh, looks pretty good. Again, compact SUV can go wrong with it. Hyundai is looks like it's going to be pricing it somewhere under 40 but maybe some people saying closer to 30 that means with incentives that's going to be a huge bargain range is good again with even without fast charging network if you have a second car or whatever that will do for a lot of people um compact suv again two years away model y is two years away at the very least uh probably plus the wait time but this car they're already making this in a, a, hi a hybrid version so they kind of know how to make this car service centers and everything that i've mentioned but the price is going to be ridiculous. And I really think that a lot of people will go for this one just because of availability, because of the price, because it looks nice. Um, and, it, you know, obviously you're going to be saving money on uh, electricity and you don't have to stand in line. So I, I got to tell you, this is a good option. If it really does start around 30K and we get another 10K here in California with all the incentives, so it's only 20K, I would definitely consider having this as my second car, actually. Um, no problem whatsoever, except for if this car becomes available before that. Now, this is Kira Near EV. This picture I took myself uh, at CES when the first time I saw it. I love the way it looks. I mean, I know it's all kind of souped up there. Uh, it looks amazing. But uh, this is another. It's a sister company, obviously, uh, established. They uh, already have Nero and hybrid plug, plug-in hybrid and hybrid versions as well. The pricing should be also pretty decent. The range is about 200 uh, 50 miles, I believe, way into 200s. Uh, we won't find out once CPA actually does their test and people do their testing, but they're both uh, Hyundai uh, and, and Kia has a, a pretty decent range. I might be confusing them. I think this one might be 238 and the other one is 250. Sorry about that. I probably should have looked that up. But um, yeah, I'm. Uh, this is another one I would consider it. I also like the way it looks inside, actually. Um, and we'll see how much of that they're going, going to keep it. So, all right. So now we're talking about Nissan, Jaguar, Hyundai, and Kia. Uh, last one is Audi e-tron. Uh, you know, it wasn't really my favorite in the beginning of the year. And I still think that they're pricing them. Porsche is one of them. It was pretty close, I have to say. If I was top six, it probably would have made it. But the thing is, I really think that's priced a little bit high. Um, and also, I think Porsche um, has an uh, um, almost a reverse appeal to people, right? If if maybe uh, all the cars, including uh, Audi and a Jaguar, they will appeal people who just kind of want a daily car or family car. Porsche is just not associated for most people as a daily car. And I think that's just the brand might be at, um, uh, 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 pushing people away. 
um, also the the pricing you know it's a little too aggressive i believe maybe 10 grand more than than it should be uh, so I think it would be a limited interest in this car, though it has a lot of interesting technology. It's not going to look like this, unfortunately, probably the furthest from its uh, prototype uh, that they're going to get. And um, they are working on the um, SUV as well. That one looks pretty cool as well. But I, I, I just... I just don't see this being a competitor until it kind of proves itself. So maybe it's not right now, but another year, it might just make my top five list. It's just not, not in top five. Um, another one you probably uh, are wondering about is uh, Chevy Bolt. And you know this one is kind of self-explanatory because I think we all know that Chevy just hasn't been very serious about this car. It's the only car that I believe um, that's even on my list right now that looks like a compliance car. I know it's still popular in Europe and bigger cities because it's small, it's a hatchback. Um, the tech there is not there. I know the range is, but uh, the Chevy's refusal to kind of promote the car, to even ramp up the production, I know they promised, but they haven't. Um, sell it in Europe or in other countries, it just kind of feels uh, that they're really not that interested. And I and just judging by the sales, People are not really responding to this car as much as I thought they would because this was supposed to be an alternative that came out one, two years ahead of Model 3 with a very comparable range and the pricing and people just didn't go for it. I know some people got it and they love it, but overall, I just don't see how it's going to compete, especially being priced at almost $40,000 um, and, and you know, Chevy is also getting closer and closer, closer than others at least as far as getting that uh, you know, tax incentive yanked out. Now, another company I didn't mention, of course, is Biotti. They do sell most more electric and uh, ele uh, ele plug-in hybrids in the world, but they are only confined confined to China for right now. So they can outsell. They can outsell Tesla and other cars there and be a competitor, of course. But as far as the rest of the world is concerned, because they don't sell it there. Um, I don't think so, but I just think it's an honorable mention just because of the sales. And the last one I'm going to mention, of course, is BMW i3. Recently, BMW said that they're not even going to move forward with this car as part of their electrified fleet. I've, I've always really hated this car, even after all the upgrades, after all this five or six years that it's been on the market. Um, they still this still has a pathetic range i hate the way it looks i know some pop, some people are okay with it the price is also about forty thousand before all the incentives and stuff like that i know they're offering a lot of different ones um now in um in the in california especially but that i just i don't believe this will ever be a competitor uh to tesla in any way shape or form so um those five cars that i mentioned guys um i'm I'm, I'm a potential customer, um, mainly because of the pricing and the range. I think this is what's really going to help them out and mainly because there is no compact um, SUV from Tesla just yet. Um, let me remind you, by the way, so I'm right now, if you didn't you know, uh, uh, hear me in the beginning is that I'm in Milan covering uh, Biden's uh, premiere there, but um, I'm gonna be back on Thursday doing news. I will catch up um, every Saturday. Um, I'm doing interviews, as you know. Well, this up upcoming Saturday, I'm going to be covering the uh, uh, My Tesla Adventure trip uh, in California. I'll try to stream live if I can. Um, but after that, I got a bunch of awesome people scheduled, Zach and Jesse. Uh, I'm gonna have a VP of uh, Workhorse. Uh, in here talking about that awesome company and Henrik Fisker is going to be here as well. So I'm very excited about it. But um, that's it for uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, other than that, uh, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.